Welcome back. Here's another update from us. Um, another week's gone by. Um, it started out by looking at this conflict between this new um, gear drive motor and the bulkhead, the forward bulkhead, which we knew was going to arise. And to be able to do that, you uh, put in the uh, put in the assembly and see precisely where that motor ends up when it's retracted. And uh, of course there was a conflict, but luckily it was not very pronounced. It was a, uh, a uh, small distance the motor had to go into the bulkhead and it ended up on the side there, as you can see, right on the side of the retraction mechanism. So quite close, but uh, luckily uh, completely uh, solvable. So we marked out that area where that hole came in and then uh, could start to look at uh, cutting that hole out and of course now it's all about uh, trying to make this kind of small rabbit hole for the uh, motor and, um, and laminate a small piece that would go around that motor so uh, uh, in many ways we could say that, uh, that that was as much of a conflict as we could hope for really because it wasn't that uh, pronounced so this was kind of a quick job really one of the problems with that um, piece was really just the fact that it came so close to the retraction mechanism it makes it quite hard to laminate that area because it's such a narrow area between that that um, that cup that we had to make and the and the motor there Let's see how close that hole is to the actual retraction motor and um, as the motor came through there, we could analyze a little bit what, what kind of situation we had. Um, and completely solvable, but just very close to that motor. So we had to make a laminate that we knew was going to be a little bit tough to get in there. But it just requires a, a few more steps to get it done. And here you can see it's all taped up and ready for laminates. And I also put some cardboard in there to kind of make the cup a little bit bigger than the motor is to make sure that there's no conflict once it's uh, assembled properly. And then it's back to the table to do uh, the common composite work that we've shown you before. Uh, only needed a small piece here of, um, of carbon fiber first to go onto the motor there to create that cup. So quite a straightforward uh, thing really. As we moved forward then with the uh, with the work there, it's, uh, it was tricky to get in, but uh, after about an hour we had that kind of sorted on the outside and then of course we do some work on the inside once that's cured as well. Um, you can see there the, the retraction motor is all taped up to, to prevent it from being uh, glazed down with epoxy and there's the cup for you. But it's, uh, it was kind of difficult to get in there. So we also prepared uh, this kind of prototype power lever that we're using, um, the two buttons that will control the gear. So those were tested on the table quite a, quite substantially and we could, we could start to work towards uh, doing a physical test in the aircraft. So here the, uh, the nose gear gets uh, assembled properly. Um, it is kind of a tricky job to assemble this, uh, this gear because of the uh, very, very specific retraction mechanism we use. But that's basically a topic for a whole other film, really, because it's such a it's such an interesting mechanical solution. But it makes it a little bit more complex to get in there and and, uh, and fix the gear. So then we did a full blown test of the retraction just to make sure we had everything in place. Um, in this case, you can see that the gear comes out while the um, the motor is um, driving it down, and this was. Uh, and this worked quite well and, and the motor was free and went into that small cup up in the bulkhead which we had made. So we could prepare now the, the wheels. And the wheels on this aircraft are basically twin wheels. So you have two wheels on the nose gear and that's to make it simpler to kind of rotate the wheels like an airliner in a way. The problem is those kinds of wheels don't really exist off the shelf. So these wheels are actually homemade. We're homemade um, rims. Um, and uh, we could put those back on now and prepare the gear to have the weight put back on. I think it's about two and a half or at least 
maybe even three weeks since we took off the gear now to do this modification. So it's uh, it's really about time we get that back on and do the final test. So here's just before we're putting weight on the gear and and we had um, and then we could uh, basically start preparing the electronics to control that gear to do a to do a test. So we put back the throttle uh, throttle handle or power level back on with this new setup of buttons. So it's not really a good ergonomic solution, but it is a fully blown prototype that kind of alleviates us of all those problems that we envisioned that would appear. So now the fly-by-wire and the drive-by-wire, so to speak, are completely disconnected from each other and it makes it a little bit more secure for the first testing of the aircraft. So there's no conflict between the two. So we wired up all of the electronics that were necessary to, to get this to run. And then we could really start to uh, test this on the on the ground. And the cool thing about this uh, me uh, this uh, mechanism that we made is that it's very very strong. So even when the aircraft is standing still with full weight on the on the nose gear, the nose gear actually can be rotated around. And that's like definitely a worst case scenario. You won't rotate this when the aircraft is standing still really. You start using it when it's rolling and there's much less resistance in it. So when it can pull it like this, it's extremely, extremely strong. So this really means now we can go outside and start to do some, some very slow taxi tests with the aircraft as soon as we, we're ready. So um, that was this week and thank you so much for watching.